Marcel, thank you so much for taking time out of your morning to jump on a call, man. I appreciate it. All right, man. I appreciate you having me. So you're three and one as a professional MMA fighter with three finishes in the win column, including a win that just happened in May uh, over at Island Fights 56. You're three and zero in bare knuckle boxing. And congratulations on all the success, man. Appreciate it, man. A lot of hard work going into it. Yeah, absolutely. I bet. Now, I mean, you started your MMA career back in 2013. How'd you get started? What made you decide to jump into MMA? I actually, it was. 2014 when I actually jumped into it. I, oh, okay. I, I took a fight uh, 2013. I think it was like December. It was just random. Somebody said, hey, you know, like, you should try fighting. And, and I jumped <laughs> it. Um, uh, I was up at the time still doing Canada football. I got finished with it. I come back here to do grad assistant um, in Alabama with Coach Saban. Eric Anders at the time was um, a pretty hot guy uh, with strike hard. He was about, I think, 8 or 9 and 0. Oh. Him and I, we both played at Bama together. Uh, okay. I, what type of guy he was, what type of athlete he was. Um, I come down and I see him plastered everywhere and I'm like, man, you know, like, you know, like, he, he's pretty good, but like, I think I'm like a little bit better than he is. You know, like, <laughs> Athletically, from like us just you know playing together, me knowing him and being around in five years, yeah. I was like doing this good at you know like MMA. Maybe I need to pick it up and check it out. He invited me um, to come out to actually uh, train at one of the gyms that he was at. I you know went out a couple times, fell in love with it, and the rest is history. I think I originally went into it just because like I, I wasn't getting where I wanted to get football wise. Yeah, and I wanted something else to do. I still had that that uh, hunger and side of me to compete at something um and that just happened to be you know what clicked and what happened at the time when i come back down and do grad assistant okay man that's awesome i mean you've now added bare knuckle boxing to your to your fight game like i mentioned you're three and zero in bare knuckle boxing what made you decide to take the gloves off it and go get into the bare knuckle boxing side of things man when i jumped into this uh a lot of people tell you you have to pick something that you like it's either you know jiu-jitsu wrestling <laughs> Yeah. Oh, you know, you got to pick one and stick with it. Yeah, you want to, you know, like kind of learn everything, but you want to master one art so that way it's, you know, your bread and butter. When I jumped into it, I, I jumped into doing um boxing. I fell in love with it first over anything. I, me personally, I don't think it. A lot of people think it's grueling and and it's a, it is really bloody, but uh, I don't think it's any worse than just regular old boxing. I I felt that I was pretty. Pretty quick, pretty powerful. Overall, like footwork, I thought I was really good at it. Me personally, if you're gonna fight, I'm just like, it's just fighting. It didn't matter what it was, I just love to fight. So the opportunity at the time of, of actually doing that. I knew it was a new sport coming in. I, I looked at it as kind of like the UFC when the UFC come into it. A lot of people was like, oh, you know, like, you know, this this won't ever like last long and like look at it now. So, yeah. Uh, when he done it, you know, I kind of looked at it as it being a, a, a a sport is just coming into it that could have a, a very very high ceiling so and me personally like i said i just like to fight yeah. i don't really you know what it is when i'm doing it you know that's just what's in me i feel like i'm built for it so i didn't really care if it was without the gloves or with the gloves i'm like anybody want to get in there let's go come on i mean you got wins over kendall grove you got wins over a professional boxer i mean just awesome awesome start to your bare knuckle boxing career for sure oh yeah yeah uh, i got one now coming up with another guy he just beat uh chris leaving okay uh, yeah a short notice fight actually i think he had like two weeks end up beating chris leaving um they gave him unanimous decision he's a pretty no i think his what was his, I can't think of what his name, but he's he's fought Bellator, UFC. Was uh, that Dakota Cochran? Yeah, Dakota Cochran, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. He's a little fast and a little quick guy. Uh, yeah. I matched him the week after I fight in um, Island Fight. So, like I said, I just love to fight. So, like I said, I, I took both of them. Let's go. Come on. Now, you're a former linebacker at University of Alabama. You played for BC Lions. You're obviously a crazy good athlete. Were you always that way, like as a kid, or did that kind of develop later in life? Man, that, that, that's one of those things, I think, as a kid, um, I tell everybody. Everybody, man when I grew up the town that I grew up in it was I wouldn't say it was it's a little bit under middle class so like a lot of the guys you know it's football season we're all out playing tag football basketball season around everybody's out playing basketball baseball season just everybody that was in in we call it the hood so everybody that was there <laughs> whatever was going at that time you know that's what we we kind of got into so yeah that, a lot of character and a lot of uh, uh my worth ethic um growing up just because it's just something that we all 
always done with everybody being around. I had a bunch of guys that was bigger than me. I was always the smallest guy. I really didn't get big up until my sophomore year of uh, high school. Then okay. I was the guy. I was the smallest guy. I, I always had to like work harder to try to get it. And I got all all older cousins, so uh, I had to work a little bit harder for the stuff that I wanted to do with all of them. So it's kind of one of those things that I think I picked up being younger, uh, and it just you know carried on as I went you know away from there. I got two sisters, so I didn't have anybody to really work out and do anything with me. So that made me do stuff even more on my sure. own. So that kind of developed that uh, that mindset that I have. Gotcha. That's awesome. Like you just kind of said man- mindset there, but what do you do to prepare mentally for your fights? I just kind of go. I don't really think. I guess okay. I, I develop that over time too. Um, yeah. I've around a bunch of five-star guys, you know, like elite athletes. So uh, mentally – I really couldn't allow myself to get caught up in the, anything that I was thinking. I just had to keep working hard, you know, find a, a different way and develop a way to outwork those guys. Like I said, when you you constantly around guys that five star, you know, top athlete, mentally you really can't really focus a lot on like, oh, this is what I need to do or that what you know I need to do. You just need to you know work. Be the be the the one that outworks everybody. I try to stay to myself a lot around you know time that I'm going to camp. Like I have a lot of guys, uh, my team and everybody that's around me. But as I'm I'm trickling down to the last like three or four weeks, I kind of start trying to be a little bit more to myself and and not uh, have like family. I go to talk to them, but I don't do I don't deal a lot with them. Like they if if they come to the fight, I really don't know if they come. I try to keep myself in a, a small bubble until I get done, and then yeah. Uh, interact with a lot of people after that uh, that's one of those things too that i developed with coach Saban. man we kind of you know you go until it's about game time and then you kind of trickle down and, and it's business now you don't really go outside activities you don't have anything um outside interference you just kind of go and, and figure out what you need to do you know handle business take 24 hours to reflect on win loss or draw and then keep on going to the next one come on what are you feeling like when you're backstage getting ready to walk out to the cage or the ring there do you ever feel nervous or do you ever feel fear coming over you? Oh, man, if anybody says that, that that's one of the hardest things I probably can say. It's so many mixed emotions. Sure. Uh, uh, I played with, you know, Alabama and played in, in big programs. And I had, you know, 150,000 people, you know, in the stands looking at me and, and you know, millions viewing. Uh, and it still doesn't compare to coming out, you know, being a single person coming out, getting ready for a fight because – you know, you're warming up. You don't want to warm up too early and then have a, a adrenaline dump when you, I mean, when you go out there and then you want to warm, you know, wait too late and then you get cold and then you got the mixed feelings with coming out of being nervous a little bit, needing that first, like, initial, like, you know, let me grab this guy to, to kind of see what he's packing. So it's, it's a lot of emotions that goes into it. So you have to learn how to uh, bundle them up. Uh, me personally, I try to listen to music and, and just try to keep myself like uh, loose and moving around so that I'm, I'm not doing a lot of thinking, not doing a lot of uh, exerting energy before I need to. Because I've come out, uh, which I've seen Eric come out the same way, man. We're so used to it. We come out, you know, flat sometimes. And that's because, you know, like just how we are and, and how we used to warming up. But I think I come out flat. I've come out flat a couple of times, but um, I usually finish pretty, pretty um, decent. But yeah, yeah. Uh, that's hard thing those those a lot of fighters i i can guarantee have a lot of mixed emotions because there's a lot that goes into it you know Mm -hmm. going from there and leaving from that backstage to go out in that ring so um you have to learn how to compress everything and and keep it um in one circle there that's awesome man sounds like you have a couple more fights coming up when are they coming up what's going on with the next couple fights you got coming Uh, i have uh, august the second i'm fighting um pensacola with island fight uh, it'll be on UFC Fight Pass. Uh, and then the week after that, I'll fight in Biloxi at uh, um, the Coliseum there with Bare Knuckle. It's like, now nah, I'm up in here now. If you, as you can see, I'm up Come here on. now. Come on. I'm a wrestling gym right now. I just got finished doing kickboxing. <laughs> now I'm in, um, wrestling up in here right now. So it's never ending. Yeah. Awesome, man. Well, I got five rapid fire questions for you, if that's all right. Go. What's, uh, what's the biggest fish you caught? Bass. I have one right now, man. I caught three years ago was about 20 i think eight inches wow come on man that's awesome i live up in uh Coeur d'Alene, idaho massive lake it's huge so if you awesome awesome fishing if you're up here make sure you bring your pole oh yeah I, i'm and i'm coming up there um 
probably within the next uh, month or so. Uh, like I said, I know quite a few people up there. I stayed up there for quite a while. Sweet. Uh, when I was in Canada, um, up in St. Mary's, I actually had a house up that way. So I know quite a few people up in um, Coeur d'Alene and Spokane. This is always a funny question to ask, but who's a guy that's hit you the hardest? Brandon Martin. Okay. <laughs> that's awesome. My first bare knuckle fight, I had a guy named Brandon Martin that I fought. Uh, and I fought a lot of guys that's like pretty strong and pretty powerful. But uh, I guess with that bare knuckle not having the, the uh, gloves on made it a little more... And um, uh, I think I underestimated him when we went in. I thought he was a little shorter than I, I expected. We come there, he was six four, just like me. And then he's from Louisiana, so I'm like, man, when I see him, I'm like, he got a cut on his face already. Looked like he's like has. So I'm like, oh man, this is gonna be a brawler. So I get in there, you know, I'm taking him out. I hit him with my punch. I knocked him out the first round. He get he gets back up. So wow. I'm like. What do I do? So I need to crowd him because, like, you know, my power is just not doing anything for him. So I start, like, hitting him, hitting him, hitting him. Well, when I back out, I, you know, didn't really pay attention. And he just come over and hit me with a overhand. And I dropped to the canvas. And, man, like, I think I was hurting for about three weeks then, man. He hit me okay. right my, uh, it, it was pretty hard. So uh, I said Brandon Martin right now is hit me the hardest out of Brandon out of Martin. Hardest fighting. Nice. Do you have a favorite fighter? I do. Uh, Boxing-wise, it'll be Floyd um, just because I like the way he, his work ethic, the way, you know, like he does things. Um, I like Lima right now, man. Okay. Douglas Lima from um, ATT in um, Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. He's a hard nice. worker, man. I've been down that way and I've seen him work, so I like the way he works. Uh, last question for you. What motivates you to be successful? My family, my kids, man. Failure uh, is not an option. So me, you know, continuing to go no matter what. And for them to have something to look up to and see no matter, you know, like what obstacle you have, you can constantly, you know, like go from there. Um, I don't let that one moment define me, whether it's good or bad. I just keep on, keep on going. That's awesome. Awesome. Marcel, I uh, want to also give you an opportunity to give a shout out to teammates, coaches, sponsors, anybody like that as well for you. Oh, man, that's, that's a big uh, list, but I like to go out and <laughs> uh, I'd like to thank just all, pretty much all my supporters, anybody that uh, followed me, put anything in me, T.O.L. Chiropractic, uh, Vestavia Vest Wrestling, got Gracie Baha and um, Pelham. Garage kickboxing. I have Q6 fight. There's a lot of people that put, you know, work into to helping me. So um, there's a long list of a lot of people that I didn't, you know, name. But uh, everybody that uh, sponsored me, man, I, I I couldn't do it without all of them helping me and, and putting their endless, you know, amount of um, time in to make sure and ensure that I'm at top shape for all these fights. So all of my supporters, all of my sponsors that, that put all the time in that they don't really have to do, you know, like that's that's the biggest key. And, and that's why I'm able to be successful between the coaches and, and my sponsors uh, taking care of me. Awesome. Man, I hope the next time that you, you uh, talk to me, it'll be me getting ready to debut for uh, UFC. So stay in contact with me and, and I'll keep you updated with everything. I like to come back on when I'm um, actually making that transition. Um, I'm looking at it being pretty soon. So uh, awesome. everybody, you know, like if they don't know, you know, keep on looking for me. I'm trying to get up there now to um, train one of you guys up there, uh, uh, Killian. Okay, that's this? Yeah. Yeah, he's been on my show like four or five times, man. He's a great dude. He's a good, yeah, good guy, man. I like the way he fights. So I'm, I'm trying to get up there, eventually come up there and get some training in with him. Marcel, it's an honor to get a chance to speak to you today, man. Looking forward to seeing you continue to get that win streak going to bare knuckle boxing and MMA. And uh, thank you so much for your time, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate thank it. Thank you so much for watching the show. Please subscribe to our channel. Would really appreciate that. If you could please give us a follow on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter as well. And please check back. We're always bringing on awesome people for the top rated MMA show and entrepreneurs, world changers, and success minded people for the Bearded Biz Show. Thanks so much. Have an awesome day.